Hi and welcome to the session on mathematics chapter 1 real numbers for grade 10. We shall be covering section 1.4 revisiting irrational numbers theorem 1.4 and example 9. Theorem 1.4 states that square root of 2 is irrational and let's try to prove this. We will prove this theorem by using the proof by contradiction technique. So let's assume the opposite or let's say let's assume the contrary to what the theorem says and let's say the square root of 2 is a rational number. Note that we have to prove that the square root of 2 is an irrational number but we are starting with the contradictory statement stating that let square root of 2 be a rational number. So if square root of 2 is a rational number then it can be expressed in the form of p by q and where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0 because we can express every rational number in form of p by q. So we have square root of 2 is equal to p by q. Now suppose p and q have a common factor other than 1 and then if we divide both the sides by that common factor we shall get square root of 2 is equal to a by b. Note that we have assumed p and q are any integers. They are not necessarily the prime numbers. So we can divide them by some of some factor which is common to them that is common to p and q and then after dividing we can get that square root of 2 is equal to a divided by b where a and b are co-primes meaning there cannot be there is no other common factor uh, among these two numbers other than 1 and in other words we can say the highest common factor of both these numbers is 1 and then if we simplify this equation we get b multiplied by square root of 2 is equal to a and let's call this as our equation number 1. Now let's take square of both the sides and we solve and we get 2b square is equal to a square and this implies that number 2 divides a square and we have written it here that number 2 is dividing a square but by using the theorem 1.3 which states that a number if divides, divides a square then it also divides a. So we can write that number 2 divides a as well. See here number 2 divides a square but now we are writing number 2 divides a because of the theorem 1.3 which we can say that a is equal to 2 times c because 2 is a uh, factor of a and a can be written therefore in form of 2 multiplied by some other integer let's say c. Now we can use the value of a from our equation 1 here and then we can get that b square is equal to 2c square and if we see carefully this equation we can see that 2 divides b square or if we write using the theorem 1.3 that number 2 also divides b. So if you see these two items that we have written here we will notice that the number 2 divides a and number 2 also divides b that is 2 divides b and 2 divides a as well. So uh, let's uh, see this that both the numbers can be divided by 2 that is both a and b can be divided by 2. Now which is contradictory to our assumptions that assumption that a and b are the co-prime numbers because here if you see we wrote that a and b cannot be further solved or let's say we, they are co-primes and they have only one as their common highest common factor. So now we have arrived at a contradiction that uh, a and b are divisible by 2 and but we had assumed them to be co-primes that is they have no common factor other than 1. Now this contradiction has arisen because of our incorrect original assumption that square root of 2 
is a rational number. Hence, we conclude that the square root of 2 is an irrational number. Now let's take an example. This is example number 9 and let's try to prove that square root of 3 is an irrational number. We shall prove this in exactly the same manner as we have proved the previous theorem which is, theorem, uh, which is to say that square root of 2 is an irrational number. The steps are exactly the same so we shall start in the same manner by assuming that uh, the contradictory or the opposite statement that is let's say square root of 3 is a rational number that is square root of 3 is uh, equal to p by q because every rational number can be put in the form of p divided by q and now let's say p and q have a common factor other than 1 because p and q are just integers they are not the prime numbers so we can find a common uh, factor among them and then we can write the square root of 3 is equal to a divided by b such that a and b both are co-primes that is they cannot be further uh, there cannot be any further or any other factor common between a and b other than 1 or their highest common factor is 1. Now solving this we get b times square root of 3 is equal to a. Now let's call this as equation number 1. Now if we square both the sides of equation 1 we get b square multiplied by 3 is equal to a square which implies 3b square is equal to a square that is number 3 is number 3 can divide a square. Now if we use theorem 1.3 which says that if a number divides a square then it will also divide the number a. Hence we can write that the number 3 divides a because here we see number 3 divides a square then we use theorem 1.3 and we get that number 3 divides a which implies that a can be written as a multiple of 3 so let's write it as a multiply a is equal to 3 multiplied by c and if we substitute the value of a from this equation 1 if you see this equation 1 we have a is equal to b times square root of 3 and if we place that value here and then if we square both the sides we get 3b square is equal to 9c square which when solved gives us b square is equal to 3 times c square which implies that 3 can divide b square and again using the theorem 1.3 1.3 we say that number 3 then also divides b because 3 divides b square let, let me just make it a little clearer here so since b 3 divides b square then using uh, theorem 1.3 we can say number 3 also divides b and now from this equation number 3 and the equation number 2 we get that number 3 divides both a and b which actually is contradictory to our assumption that both a and b are the co-prime numbers here because this is what we had assumed or we had gotten at so that is though both those numbers a and b have no common factor other than one now this contradicts contradiction arises because of our incorrect assumption that square root of three is a rational number so we can say that we have concluded that square root of 3 is an irrational number.